Hello everybody, this is Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini Apprentice version 13. And today we're going to make a bullet time flip tank. So let's go ahead and click particle fluids, control click on the flip tank, wait for it to appear, then we'll just type in 10 here and 10 here, that should be good enough. A space bar mouse wheel out a little bit, and we will move it up just so we've got some room for our fluid to splash around in. And we'll turn off the grid and just kind of fussing a little bit. We'll go ahead and uh, set up our time, click real time, and we'll set this to 180. Close, say no to that. Go back to the obj level press the L key to lay things out, uh, dive in by double clicking auto dop, and uh, with this in mind here, let's just press the tab key, go to forces and choose velocity impulse, and we'll just drop it right in between the flip tank and the flip solver. Now uh, the flip tank here, we're going to go to guides, choose particles and then change from sprites to particles and that gives me better performance on this system. Uh, we'll leave particle separation at its default. This, uh, this tutorial is about uh, how to do the bullet time, not necessarily uh, other aspects of a fluid simulation. So let's click back on the velocity impulse and we'll go to frame 23. And we want it to rise up in the Y direction, so we're going to type 2.3 and then we'll alt click on that field. Move forward one frame, 24, whoops, 24. <laughs> Go back to zero, alt click to lock that in. Now when you see this companion drop down box next to a field and you're animating the field and the field is participating in a simulation, use default isn't going to work. We need to, uh, and let's just take a look at this and see what's going on here. So our velocity goes up and even though we keyframed it to zero, it didn't stop. So let's go ahead and set this to set always. Rewind and sim again. See it's behaving a bit better because it's relaying that sim information on every frame rather than with the use default it's on the first frame. So we want that on set always. We're going to go back to frame 23 and we're going to take the flip solver and link our time scale to the same time. So we're going to alt click so for the first second, we're going to run at real time, 1.0. Then we're going to move forward, whoops, set this to 0 0.025, and we'll alt click on that. So time's going to slow down almost to a crawl. We'll go to frame 95, wait for our solver to update down here. Alt click again, so that's like a hold time. So we're going to be running slow all the way from 24 to 96. Go to 96, return this to 1. Then our simulation is going to return to normal speed. Alt click. And everything should uh, work out fine, right? So we rise this up, and indeed we do get some time, but then we get this weird flashing color then everything splashes up. Now what's really going on with that flashing color, it's a hint that something's wrong. Because what we can see is that our velocities, and that's what these colors or the speeds, um, they're not receiving this time change information and they're proceeding as, as if uh, they're still at a time of 1.0. So um, we're going to try to fix that. Let's, uh, and we're going to do that by going inside the flip solver and changing the actual solver. Um, so this is a digital asset. 
and we can do that, but we first have to unlock it by right-clicking and say, allow editing of contents. And the name will ch change to the color red, which indicates, hey, this is a big warning flag. This thing is now non-standard. So we're going to double-click to go inside, we'll go full screen. We'll mouse wheel out and look at this beast here. Um, we've got tons of nodes, but things are organized and color-coded. So what we want to worry about is this purple box, this is what we're going to investigate, and some of these open floating nodes in the sourcing down here. So let's go ahead uh, and return back to the Autodop network. With the flip solver selected, we're going to right click on time scale and say copy parameter. We'll double click to go back in, go full screen here, and we'll go into this purple box first. Um, now we're going to press the P key to bring up our parameter list here. And we'll select each one in this, each node in the purple box. And we're looking for something called time scale, just some parameter named time scale. And there is one right here. Time scale is simply an expression here. Now, what I notice, though, is that it's set to use default, which means if this is animated, it's not going to participate in the, t in the uh, sim correctly. So let's go ahead and set that to always. Click on this one. This one, I see nothing there. Create age has a time scale, which isn't even mapped. So we'll go ahead and map that with the correct um, expression. And this, these ages and lifes are probably why we're seeing that rippling color. Uh, we'll go to life, right click, paste, paste the relative reference. Um, this one's okay. The pop solver's already set. That's just a merge, so we're going to kind of go to this other area we said we were going to investigate, the sourcing, and do the same thing. We're just going to select each node and look for something called time scale. Now, advect. Advect surface does have it, and it's correctly set up. That's good. Um, nothing there. Nothing there. Sources. Now, this kill section has it as well, so we need to paste copy relative reference. Set always. Update. Paste copy relative reference, set always. That one is OK. That one, go down here. This one needs the same deal. Paste copied relative reference, set always. No time scale in here. What about here? Nothing. Clear old, this one has it. Paste copied relative reference. Advec by velocity has it set up correctly. So you can see some of them are set up and some of them are not. Here's another one. By synchronizing all of these, though, I think we're going to get better, more predictable operation for this bullet time that we're trying to create. And with that, I think we're done. We'll press P. I go back to a full a normal screen here. And we will rewind and check out our sim. There we go. Notice we're not getting that color flashing now. Our velocities are sticking and holding based upon the time that we have animated. And we'll wait for it to come around here. It's going to finish up. And now we get real time. So that's how I am doing bullet time. So you can create a fun animation, slow it down, camera tour around it, and then activate it back into real time and amaze the world. So with that, I'm out.